Okay, so in the last uh, lecture, we saw uh, the possibility of having multiple outputs uh, with the different uh, kind of um, um, uh, outputs function and each neuron uh, basically um, interpreting each one of these functions. Um, now we want to see, uh, so if, if that's the kind of scenario that we have, some, some kind of a categorization. Um, and um, by the way, this categorization that we see here doesn't have to be on static frames. It could be um, that the input is looking at 10 frames and or maybe 20 minutes of frames and is uh, looking for an action, so walking, running, something like this. Or it could be looking for uh, paths, different paths uh, that you can. So it can be different things, basically. It doesn't have to be categorization of objects. But this is one of the most typical example that is given. Um, so what you what you're gonna have? So in order to train this network, um, you're gonna need to know all these weight connections. So if you want the output to be correct, if you want it to be give you sort of one value that is close to one here and close to zero here for a pedestrian, um, then uh, you're gonna have to train this network set all these values here to give you that. Um, now imagine that you have uh, 10, 100 by 100 pixel in here, um, then you have 30,000 uh, weights, you know, that could go um, from the input to the output. Um, and there's, um, so 30,000 lines and then just, you know, depending on how many neurons you have here, you're going to have m even more. So it's an enormous amount of uh, computation uh, that you need to do, an enormous amount of number of weights. There's just no way that somebody can just uh, fiddle around and figure them out. So what is generally done is you're going to have a training set. Um, you're going to have a lot of example of pedestrian, a lot of example of cars, a lot of example of motorcycle or trucks let's say like 10,000 of each. And uh, so this training set will be huge. You will have an image input, and you will have an output. Uh, so for each function, you know, it will tell you what these values are gonna be. So it will be like this, and the output if it's a pedestrian and so forth. So uh, why, you know, possible outputs will be like this if a pedestrian, like this if it's a car, a motorcycle, or a truck. Uh, so what you're going to have, basically, you have a training set that has all these possibilities. Um, and uh, you're going to have to use this training set to, to train uh, your machine, your neural network, in order to do what it wants to do. So in biological systems, uh, learning biological system is um, not really well understood. There's a lot of studies, but uh, they really involve recording from a lot of cells in parallel in, um, in an alive system and look, looking at them for a very long time because learning takes some time in biological systems. So it's hard to study learning. There are some really great um, results and research, but you know, it's, it's still unclear. Um, artificial neural network on the other side don't necessarily have to do what the brain does. They can have different kind of a learning techniques, um, some of which are uh, maybe efficient, some of which are, are less efficient, um, more biological inspired or less biological inspired. Now we're gonna see one of them um, right now. So if you want to train this whole system, um, you're going to have to look at, you're going to you're gonna have to try to maximize um, some kind of a cost function. So uh, this cost function really is, um, um, is sort of summing up all the errors that a neural network can make at each layer or all two layers together. Um, and he also uh, tries to minimize um, the value of the overall sum of the weights. Try to regularize the, the network so uh, it doesn't, all this, this value don't really become really too, too big or too small and uh, they have very different dynamic ranges because that would be bad for a computing system because uh, 
some value may become too small for the precision of the system, some value may become too big and uh, there would be a huge disparity between the network. Instead, you want to try to normalize them to keep them about all the same. So this is, uh, look at this uh, neural network activation function. If you look at it, it's basically the sum of all the layers and all the outputs you want to uh, basically look. It's a function of uh, what the input was and what the output was. Uh, and um, this ugly, long and ugly equation, I will explain it in a second in the next slide so that we will try to understand it. Uh, this is the complete form, really. Um, don't be scared by it. It's actually quite simple. Um, what it means is, uh, similarly to logistic regression cost function, which is uh, one of the statistical machine learning techniques, uh, what you want to have is what we want to do. We want to have this cost function. We want it to um, uh, basically compare the output. So if you have an example, if I have a picture of a pedestrian and then I have uh, uh, you know, a tag that is called pedestrian. So now I want to apply my network. So my network H is this whole thing. It will give me this H of phi based on X. Uh, so I want to see the output of the network, how it compares to uh, the actual um, the actual label of that example. So if I showed him a pedestrian, so this is a pedestrian, so maybe one zero zero zero, and this value is uh, some some number. So I want to see how these two values compare, right? Um, and I want to, uh, you know, of course I want to try to um, to give them two values. In particularly, I I want to have a very low cost. You know, I wanted to say that the network is doing a good job if um, the value that I wanted was 1 and I is getting giving me a 1, then the cost should be 0. That's what this, uh, this, this value means. Uh, and instead, if um, the value that I wanted was 1 and h of phi of x uh, was, uh, was close to 0, um, I, wanted, I want this function to have a really high cost, meaning you're making a big mistake. Similarly, the other terms. So if you can see, the, this equation has two terms, basically. One term here is multiplied. If, uh, if the output is, is 1, uh, then you want this cost function. If the output was 0, then you want this other cost function, because this would go to 0. Uh, and what you want, really, if the output is 0, you want to have a value like this, and you want uh, a logarithmic function that is basically the output was supposed to be zero and you're getting zero, the cost should be very little, almost zero. And if the value was supposed to be zero but you're getting a one, you want the cost to be very high. So this is what this cost function really means. It, it just takes basically uh, it, all the parameters into account of the, um, of the network particular all these uh, um <coughs> all these weights and it tries to compute how well uh, the network is doing for a specific task by the way um, cost functions are kind of a cool um, utility function for neural networks that really decide what they're gonna do so if you want them to categorize one uh, one frame then you do it like this. If you want multiple frames, then you might want to add all the frames in here so that the error of all the, fr you know, in all frames or in multiple frames uh, is, uh, is minimized. So you try to really minimize this entire function in here. So um, in order to, to find out all the parameters of our network, so all of these files, phi of 1, phi of 2, phi of 3 for this specific task. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, we're going to have to compute the gradient. So we're going to try to look at uh, basically at this, at this function here and we're going to try to to minimize it um, or maximize the, the inverse of it as you want. Um, so you want to try to uh, to minimize 
this function so that if you start at a certain point you change all the weights of the function so that slowly it goes into a minimum and hopefully that minimum is the uh, minimum that you want of the function that gives you the best results um, if not uh, you will have to use the different kind of tricks so imagine uh, uh, here that this cost function is represented as uh, two variable like if you had two weights unfortunately if this is an image um, you have to remember that we have many layers and multiple many and tens of thousands so this um, cost function is a super large multi-dimensional network and um, it will be it will be quite hard to uh, to minimize it and it will be quite hard to see how this uh, distribution um, this cost function really is represented but you know the main idea is the same we want to have a cost function and we want to minimize it and in order to to minimize it we will have a code that will compute the cost function and a code that computes the gradient and once we know the gradient we know that we should just uh, follow go down slowly into these gradients until we um, we eat a minimum basically um, so if um, we want to look at training of a neural network so what we're going to do is uh, uh, first of all we'll compute this all these gradients so if let's say we have an example x and y so x is the input y is the category that we want so what we're going to do is we're going to put the input here and compute the forward propagation of the network so put the input here blah blah blah, blah compute all this like activation here uh, then based on this we'll compute the next layer and then based on this we'll compute the output layer uh, and that will be the output so this uh, this is fairly straightforward because this we know the connection we know how they're connected we know the weights uh, the previous weights that we had and uh, so it's pretty straightforward to compute the forward propagation and it's fairly computational intensive but not so bad um, what we're gonna do is for training for neural network training we're gonna use the gradient computation or the famous back propagation algorithm um, which uh, was invented among others by also Jan Lecan and uh, perfected by Jan Lecan I, I would say and it's basically one of the uh, major techniques uh, to uh, to really train the neural networks in a supervised uh, fashion supervised means that um, as I showed before I have examples <coughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, the back propagation is uh, uh, relies on the fact that it all of these uh, layer uh, nonlinear function are can be integrated so that uh, what I can do is I can compute um, the, the error at the last layer which is very easy to do because all I do is I fit forward uh, if, if I do the feed forward pass and I'm gonna get all these values and then I know what I'm supposed to get from the examples that I had so I know that I'm supposed to get a certain y and uh, I do all the difference between each one of the nodes at the output uh, and the y that I'm supposed to get and so I'm gonna get a vector of errors delta of layer 4 uh, that vector will tell me all the all the errors that are here so then based on that error what I can do is I can back propagate this error uh, by uh, doing basically uh, the inverse, the transpose of uh, uh, the connection matrix from layer 3, this connection matrix, I multiply by that weight and if I multiply by uh, the derivative of the, of the function in here um, which is uh, this, um, the sigmoid really activation then I can compute the error at the layer number 3 and if I repeat this process multiple times I can get all the errors so these errors are very important and um, the way you you compute them is that basically uh, these errors are going to be um, an estimate of the derivative they, they will be able to compute the derivative of this function so then we'll, I'll be able to do uh, back propagation and gradient descent so what you do 
luckily uh, the sigmoid of each one, the non-linearity of each one of these this layer, I don't know if you remember uh, the non-linearity that we talked about at each one of these layers is the sigmoid activation function uh, and one of the great thing about this is that um, it can be integrated easily and then so the derivative of the sigmoid um, is basically can be expressed uh, as this and it's basically the sigmoid multiplied by 1 minus the sigmoid again um, so if I have a value at, uh, at the output of activation of layer 3, uh, A3, uh, then uh, the value of the derivative of the sigmoid is basically just the, the output value of layer 3 multiplied by 1 minus the, the output value of layer 3 again. So I can substitute this in here and I can compute easily from the error in layer 4, I can compute easily the error in layer 3. Then I can keep doing it and compute the error in layer 2. Um, and I don't really need to do the error in layer 1 because that's just uh, the input. So, um, And then once I have this, I can compute basically the derivative of the entire uh, system. Um, so really, uh, the optimization algorithm that uh, we, we will use for training neural networks is just there's going to be a cost function. We want to minimize it, so we have a code that computes the code cost function, and then we have a code that computes um, uh, this, uh, um, this derivative of the cost function. And then what we want to do is want to change all the weights so uh, that they go um, against the gradient and they just to keep going down. So this is the main algorithm. Um, the way this is really implemented again. Uh, fully, it's like this. So um, we have a training set x1 and y1 and uh, so forth. And so what do we do is um, at each step um, we set that these counters, these intermediate uh, errors, to zero. Um, these are used to com these intermediate variable are used to compute the derivative of this function. And then for each for each one of the uh, examples in here, uh, we set the input as the example. We do the forward propagation, so we compute all the layers, uh, and then um, we compute all the deltas. Basically, starting from the output, we back propagate all the errors and compute the deltas. Uh, the one at the output, uh, layer before, and so forth up to layer two. And what we do is uh, we we had to gather um, all this all this delta at each layer um, multiplied by the output activation of that layer. And uh, once you've done this for for all the example, we come out of this loop and uh, we we compute to uh, uh, the i of j, which is basically an estimate of this the derivative by of j uh, by summing all these intermediate um, normalized uh, these intermediate uh, sums uh, and adding also the component uh, with the regularization um, and then um, this is the terms for the bias term so we, we compute all these sums here together and then at the end what we do is we have uh, this, uh, uh, this derivative and now that we have the derivative we can compute um, gradient descent so this is basically long story short is um, the training of a neural network I strongly recommend you also to uh, take a look at uh, Andrew Wang's course and uh, Jeffrey Hinton course will give you more insights about all this